Hello everyone and welcome back. I carry on with the Onslaught builds. We have another crafty but flexible build you viewers might be interested in. The Gyro Falcon and Wave Split or Combo is a pretty common setup that appears from time to time, but never stays around too much. However, in the new Onslaught mode I can see this getting a permanent spot with how amazing it is with that clearing. A using this build will of course grant a few benefits, such as fast healing, very fast super regen, non-stop volatile rounds application, great survivability, and a continuously improving weapon damage buff on demand. So let's cover why this is an amazing thing to use and set up. To start you're going to want to have Vanishing Step where dodging makes you invisible. Then you want Stylus Executioner where defeating a weakened enemy grants true sight and invis. These here will be the bread and butter of the build in terms of applying consistent volatile rounds and invis on demand. We don't need to worry about our class ability stats as this will allow us a quick and effective way of getting invis straight away. A fragments used, Echo Remnants where your lingering grenade durations are increased, Echo Starvation where picking up a Void Breach or Orb of Power grants Devour, Echo of Persistence where Void Buffs applied to you last longer, and Echo Obscurity where doing a finish on a target makes you invisible. Although Echo of Instability is usually recommended as the go-to volatile rounds access route, the following build can avoid using since Jarl Falcon will cover this quite easily. This allows us more freedom when picking the fragments, so having Echo of Starvation applied to the build will grant us that extra level of health regen, not usually possible if running instability. The rest of the fragments allows the kit to improve on this passive buff as we play, and from there you don't really need to expand further out than provided. For mods and stats, having a high resilience and discipline stat will be required for surviving as long as possible in endgame waves. Resilience at tier 10 will grant users a 30% damage reduction against targets, which will be helpful since we have a low recovery speed. As we have invis available, you don't really need to do much here except play it safe. Gyro Falcon will also grant us an overshow upon activating the given procedure to do so, but this is more of an emergency and not really that at all needed. A Discipline at tier 10 will grant you a 1 minute 16 cooldown when using Vortex Grenades, which are quite high to use and maintain. However, we do have ways to reduce its effects, for example, having Grenade Kickstart will grant us a 34.4 to 45% grenade energy return on 4 armor charges. Then we have Orbs of Restoration which will grant us a 10% ability energy for all abilities, and lastly Distribution for the 4% ability energy return. We also have Devour available via our Fragments which will also grant us grenade energy as well. This would then leave you room for additional mods such as Charged Up giving us a plus 1 to Orbs or Armor Charges held, then having Stacks and Stacks will grant us 2 Orbs of Power collected rather than 1. Having Common like Siphon and Powerful Attraction will make it easier to create and collect Orbs of Power once our class ability is free. And lastly, having Special Ammo Finder and Special Finisher mods is then a requirement for supporting our Chase Rifle usage. It's also then recommended you then do the same with Heavy Ammo Finder mods as well. Now lastly, the weapons being used, we have the Buzzard Sidearm with Overflow and Kinetic Tremors. Ideally, going with a special fusion rifle with the kit will allow more flexibility with taking out the biggest majors on hand. However, my experience with this ended up quite poorly for the build, so the following weapon is a good alternative. Small, fast and has a good perk pool, this is the sort of thing you want to carry with you when both your heavy and special ammo just aren't available. The Kinetic Tremors perk works wonders with applying a nice AoE effect on enemy's location and does fairly well when used against mini bosses. A secondary, we have the Wave Spitter Trace Rifle. The following doesn't get a lot of love from players as it should do, but when it does, this thing really does melt. Combining this with Gyro Falcon is going to allow this weapon to send out a huge death beam that is capable of severely affecting anyone that gets caught by it and their allies as well. As long as you keep this weapon pumped up with orbs of power, this thing will do the rest for you. Heavy, I have the commemoration with redirection and reconstruction. The following feels like it was designed for wave based activities and now it does really put in the work. The following is a great choice to have when your trace rifle runs low on ammo and you need something to cover it until then. The base frame allows the weapon to be very balanced on the get go, its reserves allow players to play it more safe when dealing with a huge mob and its damage overall is pretty effective for all areas. Now Onslaught mode on Legend requires players to use more endgame focused setups to accomplish their goals and survive as long as possible. 
However, with a good team and defenses applied, you can sort of use any build you like, as long as you have some synergy being applied, such as the following build. Now I know it may be funny that I'm using a trace rifle in legend mode, but only after playing around with it, it actually plays out pretty well. So the combo is simple to understand. Use Jarl Falcon as Zotic Effect to trigger volatile rounds. Then, with the combined effort of Stylus Execution applied, get continuous kills with Wave Splitter to trigger a volatile round effect on and off. Doing this will drastically boost our Trace Rifle's damage while also creating all the power to push the damage even more than normal. In that simple rundown, the setup effectively knocks out waves or waves of enemies the moment they generally spawn, as the increased damage and volatile touch the build allows us to spread out our effect far and wide. While this is all going on, the amount of orbs created will play a big part in the build, hence some of my mods being catered to create and collect as many orbs as we go along. Then lastly, this will ultimately build into our tether super for even more damage, orbs and progression of the task ahead. It's such a powerful kit that if you have a teammate with the standard attack mask applied for extra ammo spawn, it will become unstoppable in both modes. For testing, I tried this out in Legend Onslaught just to see if this was more viable in Normal or Legend, and I was generally impressed with how good it can lock down certain areas. As long as you get the buffs active, collect the orbs of power and keep your finger on the trigger, the build will deal with the minor to major to even mini bosses threats quite easily. For the bosses and mini bosses and situations where a trace rifle can keep up, our machine gun of choice will cover that area just fine. My only issue with the build is that the lack of special ammo at times being spawned. Now luckily I have all the added mods applied to make sure I get the ammo available when need be, and if push comes to shove and I drop to about 100 ammo reserves for my trace rifle, then my machine gun will be able to cover me until I get more ammo on hand. You also get ammo crates and a rally point to refill ammo so it's not really that bad, but do remember, the build can only do so much in most situations. Overall, the build has a lot of potential when you get the active buffs going for it, and from there, it locks down areas so easily that your teammates won't even need to participate if they choose not to do so. Only thing to worry about is the special ammo being supplied, but if you use your kit correctly, this will rarely become a problem. So go on, give this a try. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.